There have been many great minds in human history. Copernicus, Todd Howard, the developers of Meow Motors, maybe a few others. But now, at the risk of sounding egotistical, I consider myself to be among the all-time greats. Why? Because I asked the universe a question nobody has ever come up with. Can you beat every Wii Sport at the same time? Because December is the happy month where children receive gifts from a home invader, I decided to take it upon myself to spread some holiday cheer in the form of a Mitten Squad Christmas sweater sweatshirt that is available only for a limited time. Come January 1st, 2021, this sweater will be as dead as my dog. It's got all your favorite and relevant Mitten Squad items on it. Holiday trees, snowflakes, forks, and even buckets. I considered adding an air conditioner, but I really didn't want to spark an air conditioner genocide. I can assure you that despite the sweatshirt image appearing blurry in the preview, it will not be when it's made. It's an issue with the all over print preview. It looks normal on everything else. But there's not only a sweatshirt. There are a variety of other Christmas themed products for sale. Even a digital wallpaper. Though that one's only there because I want to see how many people are stupid enough to pay for an image. I need to explain to you just how convoluted this idea is. I'll divide it into three segments. The preparation, the setup, and the game. If you don't care about the backstory, aka the preparation, and just want to skip to the challenge, go to the timestamp on screen now. Also, this video will be like all the other Can You Beat videos on this channel. But if you want to watch a version of the raw video to experience the torment alongside me in slightly edited down real time, that video will be released as a premiere on this channel on Wednesday, December 9th at 11am EST. Now, you see, there are many ways that I could have gone about doing this. I do have five computers. Most of them are Macs because I am a gamer after all, so I could have used emulators to make this possible. Wii Sports is not really that demanding of a game for the Dolphin emulator to run, but I am a man of science. I went with the patriotic option. So, what is it that I did? I spent $1,500 on this goddamn idea. You're probably wondering how the hell I spent so much money on this. I'll explain. As great as the voices inside my jelly dome have told me that I am, and only a select few of you know this, I don't always make the best decisions when it comes to money. $200 on Vault Yoshi bedsheets, the $1,200 iPhone 12 I broke after having it for about two weeks, I spent $12 on a plan involving buying a domain name for the Doolittle movie that came out last year that would ultimately end with me getting a signed picture of Robert Downey Jr. telling me to go f*** myself. Unfortunately, Lady Luck was not on my side during that roughly, uh, let's say, 25 and a half year long period of my entire existence. I'm only 24. You can figure out what I mean. The point being, I probably could have saved myself about $500 if I thought this through a little more. Now that I've long since reeled you in with the question of what it was I bought, and your dangling little corpses are flapping in the breeze against the side of my tub, I can get to the items themselves. I bought 5 HDMI cables, 5 composite to HDMI adapters, 5 Wii's, 5 copies of Wii Sports, and of course, 5 24-inch TVs. Now, before you storm the comments to ask how I managed to do this to myself, let me f***ing explain. First of all, I got scammed. I didn't know that the TVs I bought, which some of you jackasses seem to think are computer monitors, just because that's what they're called on the box and that's what they're called on the invoice, I didn't know the TVs came with HDMI cables. I thought I had to buy my own. My iMac didn't come with an HDMI cable. Why would any of these five TVs? So that was a waste of about $50 on 50 feet of cable. I suppose I could make a high definition noose with them. That would be cool. The composite cable adapters work like a charm. I highly recommend the product whose name and brand I won't mention. The TVs were $105 a piece, which I thought was a fair price. I guess we'll talk about Wii Sports next. I assumed I'd be able to walk into my local GameStop and buy five copies of Wii Sports, but they didn't have one, let alone five. I'd have gone to another one, but I only allow myself to enter a GameStop once per year. It's a religious thing. So I turned to eBay. The drawback of eBay is that the world is a big place. My copies of Wii Sports could have come from anywhere, from strange and faraway lands like Ohio. Couldn't have that. I needed them quickly. 
which jacked the shit out of the price. I sorted by proximity and limited my prospects to only those with fast and free shipping. This is like when you're a kid and you go door to door asking for free doorknobs. You just gotta take whatever God gives you. Then the Wii's. I've rambled on about this for too long. They were $127 a piece. Moving on, on to the actual game. Almost. The first issue we find ourselves facing is the problem of how to control 5 copies of Wii Sports at the same time. While that is a problem, the one big advantage I've got is that Wii Sports, at its core, is a very simple game. So simple in fact, that a man in his 40s playing Wii Bowling couldn't possibly accidentally kick a dog in the snout while bowling. Why do I put in these incredibly specific references to my life as if anyone else in the world is gonna get the reference? I may never have the answer to that question. Wii Sports, being almost entirely based around motion, is really the only reason why this is, in theory, possible. If you've seen my Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas at the same time video, you know that trying to play even two games at the same time is a Herculean task. My initial idea was pretty dumb. So dumb that I didn't even try it. It was a... Uh, Take the five Wiimotes and tape them all to a broomstick. Turn it into like a, a Wii staff of sorts. Swing it to control each game. That wasn't what I did, because it wouldn't be painful enough. I did what I always do in times of inner turmoil. I broke out the zip ties. Also, yeah, I have a bald spot. I've told you before that I am a genetic disaster. Get over it. Of the five sports, three are 100% reliant on motion. Those three being tennis, boxing, and baseball. Boxing requires the nunchuck, though. Not this one. I broke this one for reasons you'll understand later. This means that the Wii modes controlling the Wiis playing tennis tennis and baseball could be strapped to each of my legs with a zip tie. All I'd have to do for each of them is kick my leg. It's an elegant solution to a problem I'm confident nobody since our ancestors in the Stone Age have faced. With the blood flow to my feet thoroughly disrupted, I performed a practice round in boxing just to confirm the controls. Really, I just wanted to be sure that it didn't require the joystick on the nunchuck. My only idea for moving forward if it was somehow needed was to somehow get my mouth involved, which is something none of you would have been ready to see. Then, as I started to think about bowling and golf, I came to an awful realization. Bowling needs the B button to play it, and golf requires the A button, but both of my legs are already occupied. I couldn't possibly control three games with only the motion of my legs. Obviously, the solution was to duct tape one of the Wiimotes to my right arm and its nunchuck to some left arm, preferably mine. I really didn't want to do this because peeling duct tape off your forearm is no picnic. It's not as bad as peeling it off the soft, flabby skin on your upper arm next to your armpit. I've done that too, but it's still an unpleasant experience. The controls were set, my mind was as prepared as it was ever going to be, and the real game began. I don't mean the sports themselves, not yet. I mean navigating five different menus at once in an attempt to start each game at the same time. This is probably gonna blow your mind. There was yet another complication, let's say, and this one really strained my noodle. Common Sense and the Bible tells us that each sport will take a different amount of time to complete. So what's a nasally little freak to do if she finishes bowling before her other limbs have finished their sport? Keep bowling? Start them all over. Even now, after having gone through this entire ordeal, I'm still not sure. Now if you're wondering about the actual gameplay, you shouldn't be. It's a f nightmare. Like, it was beyond anything I've ever experienced in a challenge before. Let me just play my reaction to when the game started. It will convey how this went down better than I could in words right now. This is not... Why would... What? Why would I do this to myself? This isn't gonna be possible. This is what us assholes in the bullshit challenge industry refer to as a practice round. I mean, I called it round one in the other video, but looking back, it was really just a practice round. In the early stages of my torment, I thought you had to press A to serve in tennis, which threw me off more than you'd think it would. Bowling was still perfectly playable. The fact that it can be played pretty competently by someone in my position is probably why it was the most popular game in Wii Sports. Boxing is just flailing your arms wildly about. It complicates golf and bowling to an extent, but not enough to make a huge difference. There's a time limit to boxing. The glass house you face in the first fight goes down if you think mean thoughts about him, and he throws hands like a quadruple amputee. Golf is a leisure activity. Blindly swinging as hard as you possibly can is a viable strategy until you get on the green. That leaves baseball. When I shared a picture of my adventures on Discord, some Neanderthal had the gall to say baseball would be the easy one. Clearly, he's never tried to swing a virtual bat with his feet. It's a timing issue. 
I didn't have the pinpoint accuracy that I would have had if I used my hands. If I kicked too hard, my entire body would spasm uncontrollably because I'm not a sports guy. That spasm would have ripple effects that f***ed up all the other me's trying their best to entertain their headless god. Needless to say, round one was a complete wash. After my right leg's Wiimote went flying across the warehouse I filmed this in, I had to reconsider my strategy. Clearly, duct tape needed to make another appearance on my body. The plan was to tape the Wiimote to my pant leg. It didn't stick all that well, so I rolled up my sleeve and did the only thing I could think of. I taped it to my bare leg. Of course, there was a zip tie as well. Then, because I still thought the A button was necessary in tennis, I taped the tennis's Wiimote to my left arm so I could press the A button conveniently. I won't lie. I was pretty pleased with myself. Once I removed the strap from the bowling's Wiimote because safety has no place in this challenge, I ascended into my final form, and round two officially began. Well, it began after I got back into each game. I restarted each one, a fresh start and whatnot. Boxing had me face a tougher opponent than I did the first time. Mr. Mustache is a formidable adversary, though I'd wished after I started round two that I'd moved the boxing controllers closer to my wrist to more closely mimic the way the game's meant to be played, and because them being on my forearms increased the amount of movement necessary for a swing. Bowling was still a baby game that required a negative amount of effort. Things started to turn around when I got my first single in baseball. I'd mastered the art of swinging at the exact right moment. The other good thing about baseball is that half the game is just mindless movements. The role of the pitcher is where they put people who aren't really good at anything else but still want to feel special. That's why they toss chump change to the pitchers in the MLB. Ooh, you got 30 million dollars, good for you sport, why don't you splurge and buy some f***ing on brand Captain Crunch this week. Somehow, against all odds, I managed to increase my skill level in golf to a staggering 39 thanks to a god tier score of 9 over par. I also got my head in the game and started whacking balls in tennis. Sure, damn near every ball I hit back went out of bounds, but progress is progress, even if I did get my ass handed to me in boxing. Mere seconds before I got the world record score in bowling, I discovered that pressing the A button was not necessary in tennis. That was a game changer. The challenge sorta naturally postponed itself here as I wrapped up boxing, golf, and bowling. I devoted 100% of my mental energy to tennis and baseball. Not long after that, I failed miserably at tennis, allowing me to finally take control of the universe and do whatever it took to not lose in baseball. I knew that I didn't have to win, I just had to not lose. I would have considered a draw a complete success. Then I lost. The final score for round two is two wins, two losses, and whatever the hell golf was. After an hour of attempting this, I knew I'd met my match. I wanted to take a break from this more than I have ever wanted anything in my entire life. There were just a few things keeping me from doing that. For one thing, I had to unplug almost everything in my living room to make it happen. My router and modem were down for the count. I didn't want to eat anything because I had pulled pork cooking, and I, I had almost nothing else to eat. And of course, there were four controllers still strapped to my body in various locations. Doing much of anything with them still firmly attached didn't seem like a good idea. I also wanted to wrap this up because I was expecting a delivery of my 10 fork barbarian plushies and I really didn't want to answer the door looking like I did. You know, like a maniac. I did briefly consider taking the controllers off life support for a moment to regain my composure. Just cut the tape off, then reattach them with more tape later. But still, that seemed like a lot of effort on my part. With my newfound knowledge of tennis being easier than expected, I took another timeout. Part of that timeout was to attempt to figure out where I was going to store all the shit I bought to make this happen after it finally ended. The rest was what I said five words ago. Several minutes later, back with more energy than I've ever had, coursing through my veins before, you already know what happened. This is where the real game begins. In the time it took me to do nothing but dig around on my phone, the controllers took on a life of their own and attempted to flee from their wretched existence. Number 5 had problems connecting, I couldn't remember which one was golf, it was a whole thing. I also spoke in a way that I never imagined was possible. Here we go. Let's do it. It was odd. Round 3 was off to a tremendous start when bowling refused to bowling. Just as I predicted, round 3 was where I became a man. I scored a point in tennis, then immediately decided to subtly avoid boxing because I was facing an ever-increasingly difficult opponent while all the other games remained the same. 
didn't seem fair to me. I didn't completely ignore it, but losing was an acceptable outcome. Overall, I did better than I did in round 2. Boxing went down a smidge compared to previous attempts, which seemed fine, considering what I was up against. I set a new record in bowling, nearing 190 points. Thanks to the tennis racket implant I received earlier, I upped my tennis skill by 20. I got another single in baseball, and achieved a nearly perfectly balanced score in golf. Despite finishing three of the five games, and putting most of my efforts towards tennis and baseball, I went ahead and loaded up another round of the others, just to keep the dream alive. My goals were the same as they'd been all along for the most part. A win in tennis, and a single run in baseball. The timing of both sports worked to my advantage. I've already explained pitching. This was my moment to shine, to finally make my family proud. Mere minutes later, I knew that baseball was a lost cause. It could not be done. I'd be more than satisfied by winning in tennis, and wouldn't you know it, I won. I did it. I won in tennis in the only round that actually counted. That's what I thought, anyway. Always the fool, I'd chosen a best of five rather than a best of three. However, that didn't stop me from fulfilling my dream. After one hour, 26 minutes, and 54 seconds of misery, it was time to open the f***ing canned peaches because the challenge was over. I failed. I lost at baseball again. I could not beat every Wii Sport at the same time. And personally, I think this challenge is theoretically possible if you spent enough time on it. But, like, why the f*** would you? There is absolutely no reason anyone should have ever tried to do this. It's a waste of time. If you've made it this far, there's a possibility that you wanted to see me rip the tape off my arms and legs. I won't show it all here, but I'll show the first one. The others will be in the other video, wherever or whenever that ends up being released. Alright, let's just do this real... That didn't work at all. Owie. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike. If you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything, thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.